Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here, and today I am talking about some comedic offerings from Kino Lorber. Now, two of the three of these have received Blu-rays um, prior to this. Uh, I think both of them actually from Olive Films, but these are new scans, uh, new features that, you know, the Olive discs were notoriously bare bones pretty much. And so some nice upgrades here for uh, at least one, I think, underseen 80s classic and then another um, from a director that I like very much. And then another one that's, I think, a debut on Blu-ray. I don't think it's seen the light of day on blue yet, but don't quote me on that because I always make mistakes when it comes to that stuff. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, let's kick it off with Secret Admirer. This is from 1985, directed by uh, one David Greenwald. And uh, David Greenwald is a director who also did uh, a movie called Rude Awakening. Well, at least he co-directed that. That was the um, <clears throat> Cheech Marin comedy. Um, and he's, he's done a, f a couple other things too. Uh, but this is the big one, I think, for him. And there's a commentary from him on here, which is pretty cool. But let me start by describing what Secret Mirror is. Um, first of all, it's a lot of fun and it is very goofy 80s sex comedy. Um, it is about a high school heartthrob. Um, C. Thomas Howell plays this main kid. Uh, his name is Michael Ryan and he gets an unsigned love letter and his guy friends try to convince him that it's from this gorgeous prom queen, Deborah Ann Fimple. And that's played by Kelly Preston, um, the late Kelly Preston and, uh, pretty honor student Tony, uh, played by Lori Laughlin, is trying to help him, um, pass his own anonymous letter to Debbie. Uh, but when Michael's younger brother snatches and misplaces the original letter, his le his little brother is played by uh, Corey Haim. Um, then things get a little crazier, and the mysterious romantic words are soon make their way into the hands of the adults in the family, the parents, and it starts to become just this incredible, ridiculous farce, you know. Um, and so it's. It's pretty pretty funny. Um, so you start with C. Thomas Howell. He's got some buddies played by 80s regulars. Uh, Casey Shamasco from 3 O'Clock High. Courtney Gaines, among others, uh, that you'll definitely recognize. And uh, that group is very fun. But yeah, a lot of it is just sort of the like girl right in front of you probably likes you kind of comedy slash Cyrano de Bergerac kind of thing. As, um, you know, Tony helps the uh, C. Thomas Howell character write letters to Kelly Preston. But, you know, she may have a thing for the C. Thomas Howell character, that whole business. So that's goofy and fun. It's a teenage Cerno, Cerno de Bergerac. But adding in the element of the adults suddenly thinking that their spouses are cheating on them and trying to speculate as to who... Um, it's great. So, so you have, like I said, C. Thomas Howell, Lori Laughlin, Kelly Preston. And then in terms of the parents, you have, um, D. Wallace as, uh, C. Thomas Howell's mom and Clifton Young as his dad. And then Lee Taylor, Lee Taylor Young and Fred Ward as Kelly Preston's parents. And they are the ones that get their sort of, um, signals crossed as the who's cheating on who and who the letter is for and, like I said, it gets pretty goofy and pretty fun uh, overall. But but I think a little bit underseen as an 80s comedy and um, one that I've always appreciated. But uh, it's interesting to find out a few things via the commentary. Now, this disc has a commentary uh, with director David Greenwald, co-writer Jim Kauf, 
and associate producer Lynn Kauf, moderated by um, film historian Daniel Creamer, who I don't remember hearing a lot from in the track. It's mostly just the cat, the director and co-writer and produ- co- associate producer talking. But one of the things they say right up top is that this was originally a project for Gene Wilder and uh, Gilda Radner, that it was supposed to be Gilda writing letters for Gene Wilder's character, but Gene passed. I think he said something like Gilda would never do that. <laughs> I don't know what the problem was, but it's a totally different movie. Even if you used Gilda and Gene Wilder as the parents in this setup, that would be strange. They'd be pretty old at that point. Um, yeah, so I don't know how that would have worked. But regardless, what they did come up with, I think, becomes one of uh, the more enjoyable, if underrated, 80s sex comedies, you know, and comedies just in general bouncing off that Cyrano de Bergerac type plot. Uh, so anyway, that is Secret Admirer. As I said, it comes with a, this is a brand new master from a 2K scanner, the 35 Interpositive, and it looks better than the previous Blu-ray from Olive Films, and it has reversible artwork, which features Kelly Preston on the cover and a nice slip cover. Um, so that's definitely recommended. Now we're going to jump back to the 1970s for a second here, 1976, with uh, a movie called The Big Bus. And this one is a lot of fun as well. And it is taking off on the... Um, hugely popular disaster film genre from the 1970s and uh, it's directed by James Frawley which I think is fascinating because James Frawley would go on to do the most famously the Muppet movie three years later so he's sort of starting his satirical comedy bits with this movie uh, and then going on to to that one um i mean he also did a movie called the christian licorice store which has got a little bit of a satirical edge and then he would go on to do fraternity vacation in 1985 um anyway most known from the muppet movie i think but this movie uh is the ultimate disaster film parody and it is about a nuclear powered bus that is making its maiden non-stop trip from new york to denver and the journey is plagued by disasters due to the, the machinations of a mysterious group allied with the oil lobby. They don't want this bus to succeed. Um, will the down-on-his-luck driver with a reputation for eating his passengers be able to compete uh, complete the journey? Um, yes, that is one of the silly plot points. Joe Bologna plays a disgraced bus driver named Dan Torrance who was part of an incident that involved cannibalism. Uh, very silly. Um, but the cast is pretty great. It includes, again, Joe Bologna, Stocker Channing, um, Rene Aubergenois, Ned Beatty, Bob Dishy, Jose Ferrer, Ruth Gordon, uh, Larry Hagman, Sarah, Sally Kellerman, Richard Mulligan, Lynn Redgrave, Richard B. Schull, Stuart Margolin has a small part, Howard Hessman, Vic Tabak. I mean, it really goes on and on. So it's not only parodying the disaster movie, it's also sort of the all-star disaster movie, the one that had the checkered tiles of all the faces on the poster. It's it's that kind of movie. That's how big the, those films were in the 70s. And again, this is, you know, four years before Airplane, which is obviously taking off on those disaster movies as well. And it's certainly funnier than The Big Bus, but I do think The Big Bus is a pretty funny movie, including all kinds of silly gags. Um, there's a bit about a bus driver bar where a guy threatens another guy with a broken milk carton. I can't make that sound funny, but in the context of the movie, it's definitely funny. But there's all kinds of goofiness in it, lots and lots. And the bus is pretty <laughs> pretty silly and pretty impressive and very colorful. And this is a, um, as I said, I thought this, I think this is, might be a Blu-ray debut and it's a brand new HD master 4k scan of the original 35 camera negative. So it's a widescreen movie and it looks really nice, um, in this transfer. So if you're a fan of those 80s disaster movies and like the spoofy comedies that you can, um, sometimes see that sort of sprouted off of that movement, this is one of them. And I think one that is a little underrepresented, 
Um, has an audio commentary by film historians Howard S. Berger and Nathaniel Thompson. Sort of just a general discussion of the genre and, um, you know, the films that sort of influence this and the actors involved. Again, there's so many people uh, in this film, and I'm a big fan of, you know, basically all of them. So, uh, goofy spoof on disaster movies, and disaster movies are kind of one of my favorite genres anyway, so, you know, I, I like even the, the weak ones, um, and this, then the spoofs that aren't even, yeah, I mean, this is just up, up my alley, so, anyway, very nice release, uh, does not have reversible artwork, I don't think, uh, but does have a nice slip case and a new transfer and a commentary, so that's the big bus. And then last but not least, we have Making Mr. Right, back to the 80s again for this one. This film is directed by the great Susan Seidelman, who did such gems as Desperately Seeking Susan and uh, Smithereens. I'm a big fan of Smithereens. Uh, this one is from 1987, and it stars John Malkovich and Anne Magnuson, as well as Glenn Headley. Uh, ben Masters, Laurie Metcalf, Polly Bergen, Hart Bachner, Polly Draper. Um, it is about a reclusive scientist that builds a robot that looks exactly like uh, a guy <laughs> uh, to go on a to go on a long term space mission, basically. And since the scientist seems to lack all human emotion, he is unable to program them into his android and an eccentric woman is hired to educate the robot on human behavior in the end she falls in love but is the robot <laughs> is the robot or the doctor mr right so the doctor is played by john malkovich he makes an android version of himself to go into space but he doesn't have the ability to program it so Anne magnuson is brought in to help you know give some emotional context and it's kind of like I mean, a little like Starman in a way, because you have a woman that's educating a sort of a blank slate of a person. You know, in the case of Starman, it's Jeff Bridges. This one is definitely angling much more comedic than Starman does, but I couldn't help but think of that sort of comparison. But yeah, it's just, um, you know, kind of a goofy 80s comedy in that way. Um, this one has a nice audio commentary with producer-director Susan Seidelman and actress Anne Magnuson. Really great track. Really love to hear Susan Seidelman on commentaries. That's a big plus for me. Modern Love interview with actor uh, actress uh, Anne Magnuson and Pygmalion87 interview with producer-director Susan Seidelman. Um, so yeah, uh, I can see the comparison, the Pygmalion type thing, you know, where you're teaching somebody the right way to be, you know, sort of in a civilized society. Um, anyway, great stuff, great interviews and great commentary and a great update of a disc that again was released by all of films. And now you can own on a nice Blu-ray. This one, again, I don't think has reversible artwork. No, uh, but it does have a nice, uh, slip case. And again, this is a brand new HD master from a 2k scan of the original 35 millimeter inner positive so that's making mr right from 1987 um so yeah i love that kino continues to bring out comedies that's a big big genre for me in general and so i'm gonna try to highlight those especially the 70s and 80s uh comedies because i feel like you guys out there are interested in that period those two periods the most um, so I will bring those up whenever I can and I uh, just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.